Hello and welcome back to the Premier Cheese YouTube channel. Before we get into the FBL show, if you can leave a like and subscribe, that helps us out a lot. Anyway, let's get back into it. Hi boys, hope you're doing all well. Uh, without further ado, let's get into winner of the week. Finally, Ellis lost. Uh, and Jack was the... Oh, it's, oh, I feel surprised he's letting you down because you did soundly beat both of us. Uh, and we both, be I we did. both I beat, we both beat, beat Ellis, you. but we soundly beat, you soundly beat both of us. The only reason that I didn't come second this week was because I forgot to change my captain. And I, <laughs> I wanted it to be Salah, and obviously that didn't work out for me because I forgot who did, to change my captain. Who, who did your captain? I think it was Greenwood from last week still. I mean, I, I, I forgot to change my team completely. I still had Antonio starting, I knew he was oh. a <laughs> who, who came in for him as a sub? Uh, Simicast, to be fair, he got five points. So. I mean, you say oh. that you say that in the fact that I'm still captaining Jimenez out of blind allegiance. <laughs> 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 next week, next week, go on. First of all, uh, Jack, one would you day like... he will. One day he will score again. Jack, would you like to point us out who your big scorers were, your big winners, your big movers, your big shakers? Um, yep, yeah, my big money makers. Okay, so this week I took a minus four. I made two transfers. Because um, I brought in Ronaldo, I thought, well, you know, he had such a good game against Newcastle, and everyone else is going to bring him in. I kind of feel like he's one of those players. That if you don't have him, you're going to lose points from everyone. So I thought, right, I'm going to bring him in just to follow the trend. Uh, I brought in Kovacic as well, who was very cheap. I think him and Kante are kind of at the same level. They both got a six, which is great. Although I kind of wish I did bring in Kante because he ended up scoring. But Kovacic got an assist, so I can't complain too much. But obviously, my biggest scorer was Salah who I captained, and he got a goal and an assist, I think. Yeah, same as... So he had same, a great... Same as Tony, I believe. So Tony and both got 12 yeah. points, but obviously the double for the captain. Yeah, so... Uh, but yeah, Tony got uh, 12. Uh, I did very well out of the Villa game, because uh, Martinez got eight, Target mm. got six, Ings got five. I did rather well out of the Man United game. Ben Rama and Ronaldo both scored. How did Martinez um, get eight? Uh... So Saves. But bonus points, bonus point maybe. Well, maybe a save and a saves. bonus points or a cleave shave. Maybe, maybe got one. I don't, th I don't think he really made that many saves in the game. No, no, oh, well. Um, but yeah, I mean, my only, uh, my only two players that kind of let me down were Pogba and Soufal. I was going to say and this. To be are honest, you, I have... are you planning to bring any of those two out? Are you keeping positivity with them? Are you keeping them in for a well, little longer? Well, I was looking at this earlier, and I am thinking, um, I'm thinking if I bring out Sue Fowl, oh, there's a team that are doing quite well. Who I was, I'll open up the app on my phone. <clears throat> ha, Is it have, have a, have, it yes, I was going to bring in Cucurella, Cucurella. Bless yeah, Cucurella, the new signing. Because yeah, he's a new signing. He is a uh, he play, he plays at left back for them currently. However, he is a um, he can also play as a winger, so he is going to want to bomb forward a lot. So I can see him getting the other assist team in there. Um, Sue Fowl's not really started the season great. I mean, not I mean, as a fantasy player, he's not started great. As a real player, he's doing fine. You know, West Ham are doing great. But <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely co I'm definitely considering. Um, yeah, I've checked bringing. I've had to bring out. Henry, because apparently he has a knock, so I'm not sure if he is going to play. So off my bench, I've brought in Reguilon, but Spurs have been a bit. Spurs have got they've got to be fair, they've got an applied clean sheets, but they, they. I mean, if 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 the Palace game was anything to go by last week, then I am concerned. And and then this week we're getting against Chelsea, two consecutive three nil dickings. Uh, they are um, Ellis. Uh, before we go Hello. on to the big points earners of the week, uh, how are you going to stop your downfall? <laughs> My downfall? <laughs> yeah. Wow, that, that's very, it's very rude. Um, I'm going to somehow shoehorn Lukaku into my team. I've got two free transfers this week. I'm going to try and figure Ooh. out how to get him into there to get some goals up top. Obviously, it might be Ings obviously, he makes way, obviously, obviously copy me. So um, you're, we were back with this this narrative we're again. <laughs> on to points total of the week. <laughs> Right, these are the big earners for this week. Uh, Ellis, 
who have you, apart from the two obvious Villa players on the list, uh, who are you focusing towards? Who do you think has good run-ins and who do you think is a good investment for the future? Well, there was there's more defenders on this list, I think, than I was expected. Obviously, Matty Cash at the top, then Thiago Silva on the same points. Um, Rudiger, Van Dijk's in there as well, Alonso. De Gea in goal, 10 points. There's Yeah, there's maybe defenses where you should put your money um, this season. Uh, but then again, Ishmael Lassar, whenever Watford are having a slightly easier game, you're probably going to... You'd probably be too well to get him in, or even when they're not having a slightly easier game. Ooh, and, um, and, the, he, and they've got they've got Newcastle then Leeds in the next two ooh, games. He, so maybe Saar would be a good a good in because obviously he's in four. Well, well, it's either Saar or Cucurella for me. I'd, or I could I could do another minus four. Jack, is Bailey and Cash flash in the pans, or do you think they're actually they have some legs to them in terms of points? Um, Bailey, definitely, yeah. Bailey, I am very excited. I'm very excited. As a Villa fan, and I, and I reckon Ellis will be echoing my sentiments here, Bailey makes me rock hard. <laughs> <laughs> he, like, nice phrasing, he, nice phrasing. You, you, you just watch him, and he's got that like star quality about him. And I don't think we've had a player... I mean, obviously Grealish had that kind of star quality. But apart from Grealish, we've not really had a player that... When he gets on the ball, you kind of just think, "Ooh, something good is going to happen now." Something. The dude just is a lunatic. He tries shit and it works. And he's also like one the of the dude crit- is a lunatic. What, what a good would you would you say it's, would you say it's a lot like an, an Adama with end product? Someone who you're excited yeah. to see, yeah. excited to see him run yeah. at people. To, to be, well, to be fair, he, he, he's had he's had three years playing in the Champions League with Bayer, well, and high end Bundesliga with Bayer Leverkusen. Yeah, and he's also what he, and and I think this is something that's going to go under the radar radar for a few people. He's also one of the quickest people in the league. Mm. So he, I I I believe he 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 did have the opportunity to be an Olympic runner for Jamaica. Oh, wow! <laughs> and considering it that they're some of the fastest people in the world in terms of hundred meter runners, the Jamaicans always produce very quick players. And if he was kind of in and around that, um. In and around that, then he, he's a seriously quick player. And he's, so to he's answer be... your question, Sam, um, <laughs> Cash probably a flash in the pan. He's not going to score every week. Villa might not keep that many clean sheets. Well, uh, well, 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 well I mean, of returns, well, I mean, to be fair, if we carry on playing three at the back with the wing backs, Cash mm. is much more comfortable um, pushing forward as a wing back, much more so than Target, because he used to play as a winger for Nottingham Forest. So maybe Cash is a decent player especially because he's much cheaper than a lot of the other are you regu- uh, are you regu- are you regularly playing a free uh well this is the question because the thing is bailey and buendia didn't start uh but probably he, not it's an option that Vera have yeah he he does still like to push forward though he's a very attacking uh wing back the, <laughs> the, the, the other trend from the other trend from this i think is chelsea defenders as well which have been they do yeah. have a history of scoring, especially Alonso from assist, mm. and then obviously Rudin and Targo Silva are always. And even Kante, a defensive midfielder, was getting on the score sheet. I don't think any of actual Chelsea attackers got on the score sheet, but it just shows how versatile they are as a squad. And I think actually for the future, they look pretty decent, especially with 5.4, 5.5, which is pretty decent value for a access into a top tier defense and a top tier team yeah uh i think because obviously you get trent who's like seven million van dyke 6.5 so actually probably chelsea defenders more to go than liverpool's defenders have been a bit rocky say in defensive returns but sort of average in attacking returns so i think actually chelsea's probably a much better thing there's an obviously sar it's fixture based especially with relegation bit fodder where you're obviously not going to get points off the top six or even the top 10 top 12 it's always going to be if you've got a run of bottom eight teams that these players like yeah. Watford and Norwich and other teams like maybe even Brentford but maybe that's going too far always will thrive in those games but not necessarily the bigger games where they will be you might have just dispatched uh, but yeah I think we go on to the big transfers in of the week <music> on to the transfers in boys uh, and what I see here is a lot of people having transferred him out last week, but transferring him back in this week. Michael Antonio is the top to transfer in. Uh, Ellis, do you think this is wise, or do you think this was a wasted exercise if people were bringing him out for one week and then t- bringing him back in? Um, I think it's 
probably a good idea. You've got he's what a seven point eight million striker, something like that. Uh, so you might as well transfer him out if you got the money. If you what, if you think you can replace him for that one week and then bring him back in the next. Uh, so yeah, if you if you don't want to save that free transfer, it was logical to take Antonio out and then bring him back in again, which a lot of people have done because it's West Ham's main threat. And they weren't as potent against Man United as they would have been um, with him in the side. They definitely, well, probably would have scored that penalty in the last minute uh, if he'd have been on the pitch, mm. uh, if he'd have taken it. Um, and yeah, you know, he's had his rest now of the of the weekend, so he can come back next weekend. Well, you say that, but then he's, he's, not, he's not really had a actual break, so he's, he's been playing the Europa League, so he hasn't actually been yeah, true. rested, and hopefully he won't be, um, say, unfit, lashing a bit sharpness, so he has actually been playing, which I find actually pretty decent. Uh, Jack, do you think there's anyone else on this list who may be a red herring, someone who you perhaps wouldn't put money into, but people are putting a lot of faith in? Um, Possibly Damari Gray? I mean, he's had a really good start, but my concern is that I think Everton are going to kind of fizzle out. I mean, the game against Villa this week, they were missing key players, but I don't think this, a lot of teams will, and I think Brighton are the same. I think Brighton are going to start strong and then they're going to tail off and finish mid-table. And I think Everton are going to be exactly the same. I don't well, think yeah. they have... And the problem is they've also got a really small squad. They had three injuries this week and couldn't field a, uh, couldn't field a whole bench. Hmm. I was I would say for Demar Gray, it's obviously a cheap option. I think 5.7 million is not yeah. ever going to be bad, even if he doesn't play or doesn't get attacking yeah. returns. He's still so cheap that it doesn't really matter. He can sit on your bench as sort of a differential, etc. I think maybe St. Maxima a million more, 6.7 million. I don't know what Newcastle's fixtures are. I'll actually check. They look pretty decent, but I still um, think it's very hit or miss when St. Maximum gets points. Yeah, and it's still Newcastle. Like if they, if they are going to get points, it's going to come through him or through Wilson. But it's also they're not playing well this season at all. Um, I think yeah, like Jack D- D- just said, Duffy for Brighton. I think that's a weird one. People bringing them in. I mean, yeah, they are doing well, but I, I'm not sure they've kept lots of clean sheets. Has he scored yet this season? It seems like a weird player for so. I mean, I guess if he's, um, if he's cheap and they're doing well. Um, he did, he got an assist against um, Leicester. He got a well, and then he got a clean sheet against Brentford. Um, it's also oh, he got oh here we go game week two he got fourteen points because he scored and kept the clean sheet and got three bonus points. I think I think yeah, also so... with Duffy is that it's four point three million. So it's if you're looking for a differential pe- mm. person into a Brighton mm. team that are doing very well with three good fixtures in Palace, Arsenal, and Norwich next will be quite a decent thing to bring in, especially if you're trying to alleviate money elsewhere. But, uh, yeah. I like how Arsenal, their class is a good fix, you know. They, I mean, they are. <laughs> they like they beat Norwich yeah. and Burnley, and they've not beaten them resoundedly. They were barely beating Norwich, and Norwich are the worst team in the league. So I don't think necessarily it's that big of an achievement. Um, and they still I mean, got a lot of improvement that, to do. I'm, I'm big time considering bringing in uh, Tommy Yasu. And, I, and I'm pretty sure in... Either the previous podcast or the previous FPL show, I was like, he's not going to solve all their problems. You know, they spent a lot of money on him. But since he's since he's played, they've kept two clean sheets. So, like, Fair enough. I'm yeah. fully prepared to eat my words and actually bring him into my team. Against Norwich and Burnley, though, it's not... It's If you're going to keep um, clean sheets, you bet it's those teams. It's not... I, but, but if you look at Arsenal's next six fixtures, because I'm looking at... They don't have a red fixture for six fixtures. They've got Spurs at home. Brighton away, which they will struggle. Palace at home, Villa at home, Leicester away, and then Watford at home. I think there's a couple of clean sheets at least in there. I think uh, I think it could be, yeah, but maybe. Arsenal if, in the if, same if way. Of, yeah, Arsenal in the same way as Newcastle. I think Arsenal are unpredictable and will fold. Like we've seen with Spurs and Arsenal, the same. I think they have it in them to have a good performance, but especially in the case of Spurs, really. But Arsenal do tend to as well. But they do also have it in them to capitulate totally. Um, so I don't necessarily trust that I think they might have attacking returns because I think they're a better attacking team than they are defensive team. Um, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I just think I just think Arsenal is always a risk to go for, and I think there's better options anyway. Uh, but yeah, shall we go into the evacuation zone? <laughs> Uh, 
Right, boys, on to the transfers out. I will say... It's basically just injured people. Like it's, I think that this is all we're going to expect from the mm. transfers out. That it's going to be either people who aren't performing or people sort of folding off. Someone doesn't start. Obviously, Torres is not starting now. He, we thought he would be immune from this rotation because he would be their recognised striker. What they were going for as a striker, which they do lack at City, but apparently not. Apparently, he's got the same risk to be rotated as every other Man City player. Uh, Ellis, um, do you think? Say, yeah. Sorry, I just wanted to say that um, two of the players on that list, quite near the top, I have taken out my team this week. <laughs> so I'm one of the one of the trendsetters, you know. Uh, I took out Alexander Arnold and Danny Ings, so I could bring in um, so I could bring in Lukaku, and then I bought in Liveramento from Southampton and as a cheap defensive option. Okay, Jack, do you Trop- have, tropical? Do you have any of these players, Jack? Um. Yes, I well, well, I do right now. I'm probably going to use my wild card this week, um, which I've already mentioned, and I think I'm going to take out Mount. So, yes, as of this second, I have Mount, and that's the only one I have. Oh no, I have Ings. I also have Ings. Have you got Shaw? Uh, no, I don't have Shaw. I have um, but. I am probably going to bench Ings for the next week or two, maybe, because Villa have a awful, awful set of fixtures coming up. And I don't think it's a time where... The, well, to be fair, if there's a position you want to have, if you've got a Villa player, you'd rather have a striker than a defender because your defenders are not going to be keeping clean sheets. But your strikers may get goals. So if there was a Villa player that I would be keeping, it would be Ings. I'm not going to get rid of Ings, because I think he's going to be someone that I'm going to want to transfer in later on after this little bad spell of fixtures. Um, but I can understand why people have gotten rid of him. What surprises me is that we've always looked for someone in that City team that has constant minutes, especially in attack. But Grealish, I think for the third week in a row, has been on this list and has just been transferred out in Hall, even though he yeah. plays almost every all of the 90 minutes for City. And he does get attacking returns, not maybe the thriving amount you want, but he does get tacking returns in most games. So I don't understand mm. why it, this keeps happening because obviously a lot of people would have put £100 million player and maybe got him out and maybe expecting a little more for him. But I still think he's it's similarly, decent value. It's similar to Fernandes though. I feel like people are trying to make room in their squads for like Lukaku, uh, Ronaldo and Salah because I think Salah was pretty high up on transfers in and he's having a great start to the season. So people are thinking, who can I take out who is these high value players um, to bring in these higher value players who are doing really well so far? Yeah, I, I and obviously I think on this list he's the most transferred in of this transfer out list. So there is a lot of flow. There is people coming and bringing him in and bringing him out. So I just think it's a bit weird because I think when you've got someone confirmed into a city team that really just score for fun, I think surely even if he's not going to be a player who gets like on the end of every goal, he's going to still be involved in assists and he will be involved in a goal every so often. I just I just think it doesn't make sense to him. I would I would be thinking about bringing him in rather than bringing him out. And I'm actually thinking of bringing him in. So we'll see. But Jack, is there anyone else on this list that you're surprised by? Uh, Jossa, perhaps? I mean, is he not doing very well for them? I think um... this might be a rotation issue. He has started most games just not having attacking returns. So 75 minutes yeah, played, no attacking returns. 81 minutes played, no attacking returns. It isn't for a lack of trying, though. I think that he's had a few chances, especially I think Mane had a chance that was basically confirmed as an assist that should have gone in, but Mane scuffed, scuffed it wide. Um, yeah, it's in, it's interesting to see. I think it's just because the attacking return shot hasn't been has been transferred out. Mm. And obviously 31,000 people in still see him as a viable option because he's a start for Liverpool and that Liverpool team can still score. Yeah. Um, I think Shaw's quite an interesting one. Um, he's not got, I don't think, an assist yet this season. He's not scored a goal. And Man United have only kept one clean sheet in the first five games. So he's not been, or well, he's not had the returns that I think everyone thought he would have right at the start of the season. Yeah. And that now... And that was paying the price. He got assist against. Bitch. He got an assist against Newcastle. But yeah, I think Man, Man United are just having a issue at the moment where they just tend to concede one goal. <laughs> uh, yeah. So there's no clean sheets available. I think the only clean sheet they got was against Wolves, and obviously Shaw did play that. Yeah. But every other game has been one goal conceded, and they've like 
hat shit type. They might have scored four or five, and then I think two in one. But um, they do tend to just let one in at the end or sort of like around there, which is why Shaw is not getting that clean sheet bonus that they want. But uh, yeah, does anyone else have anything to say about these? No, yeah. I, th- I, th- I, th- I think we've talked it all out. Yeah, so, so we'll leave it there for this week. Uh, thanks for joining us and see you next week. Bye-bye.